Sky Sharon and Clint's Edge. Today is International Unfriend Day on social media. Hey, Arriba! Happy International Unfriend Day, everybody. I've become quite the unfriender in my old age, where I just can't be bothered with people anymore, and it's, it's one strike you're out. I, I have a few things. I unfriended somebody for continuously, every single day, sending me Texas Hold'em notifications. <laughs> instead, of, yeah. instead of muting them, I was like, get out, you're dead to me. Um, another, I've unfriended actually three people from my friends list that openly use the F word that... Um, not the one that runs with duck, the other one. Oh, the pile of sticks one. No, yeah. Yes, yeah. I hate that word so much. And I was like, if you're using that word, you ain't friends with me, unfriend. Yeah. And I just get, you know, I just get more and more ruthless. Too many baby photos, unfriend. Oh, that's the happiest part of their life. Yeah, but I don't need to see it every single day. Honestly, <laughs> I had to text my sister the other day and I said, one a week or two a week, <laughs> not every day. I unfriended so many people on Facebook that I now have no friends. It's just me. It's not even, why am I even on there? I'm wasting my time. But it's just one of those things that I, but then I think to myself, it's a little bit stink to be unfriending someone on Facebook. It's so... Um, Passive aggressive. Yeah, yeah, instead of just being saying, look, mate, I've unfriended you on Facebook. The only person I've ever done that to is Cooge, where I told him I unfollowed him on Twitter because I was sick of his gym tweets. You wouldn't, you wouldn't walk up to someone out of the blue and go... Guy, a uh, lot of pictures of you at the gym recently. I'm just here to tell you, we're not friends anymore. Good news, bro. You'll never see a picture of me at the gym because I never go. <laughs> but I reckon this afternoon we should find someone. I'm sure there'll, there'll be one person out there that is keen to unfriend someone in real life, not just on social media, oh. to ring up and break the news. Face to and, face. And actually, you know, be tough about it and be like, you know what? I'm doing this straight up, not just when they go to stalk okay. page and find they've been deleted. Okay, so we want to end a friendship on the radio. We'll yeah, get, we'll, we'll give you a, a social media friendship. How very Jerry Springer of us. Well, this could get awkward. We're going to do an actual unfriending instead of a social media unfriending because today is International Unfriending Day. Happy an International Unfriending Day, What a Sharon. day. I always get a cake. It is so <laughs> passive aggressive to be doing it on social media and people find it. So we're, in, we're just going to make someone be... <laughs> Yeah. Up front about this it is a great tell, idea. tell their friend, and it may prevent other people unfriending this friend. So, welcome to the show, Stacey. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? We're good. Are you a little bit nervous about unfriending your yeah, friend? Yeah, it's, it's a brave thing you're about to do. <laughs> Uh, brave, bitchy, who knows? But um, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty upfront person, so oh, I can deal with it. Well, we have your friend on the line already, Stacey. So welcome to the show, Laura. Hello, hello. Hello. Now, you have no idea why you're on the phone with us, but we've got your friend, I think your friend anyway, we've got Stacey on the line. We're going to throw it over to Stacey. Stacey hey, friend, Laura. Stacey. Hi. <laughs> a l- little bit awkward, um, but... Basically, Why? What's going I mean, on? We, well, we've been friends for a long time, so I feel like I'm, you know, I'm pretty upfront with you. Um, yeah. Didn't really know how to kind of do this earlier, but um, just, I think it's probably just better for our friendship if I possibly unfriend you on Facebook. <sighs> what? Why? Well, I what, just, do you, what do you I mean? I love you to bits. I love you to bits, but honestly, if you put one more baby photo on Facebook, I'm going to unfriend you in real life, and I can't handle it. So if oh, we could just oh my get God, off so real. real. Are yeah, for real. It's because of my yeah, baby photos. Why, Stacey? So many on. So yeah, I know, but I want to. Sh- I want to show them off. But There's nothing I wrong with it. I can't believe. Oh my god, you made me so upset. Oh no! No, don't cry, Laura. Please don't cry. Happy unfriend day. Happy unfriend day. <laughs> did I, did I, um, oh, I didn't expect it to go. Laura, we're going to give you a prize just to soften the blow of um, not being <laughs> friends with Stacey on Facebook anymore. We'll um, we'll sort this on. I honestly didn't think you were going to cry. I'm so sorry, but I just I just don't want to get pissed off with you in real life. So I can't, I can't really talk. I'm, I'm so can't sorry. It. Oh my god, this is really uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, Stacey. So um, look, uh, God, I don't know what to do. What do we do? What do we we'll, do? Um, we'll sort this out off, off air. Um, maybe we go to a break of some sort and we'll, um, we'll smooth this out. We'll get some prizes. Chan, get a lot of prizes. <laughs> we need a lot of prizes. A lot of prizes. We need a truck of prizes, get, mate. Get another million dollar prize. <laughs> Ideas didn't go very well before. Just for the record, it was Clint's idea. It was not my <laughs> and, um, idea. It's International Unfriending Day on Facebook. And so we thought, hey, it's passive aggressive to unfriend someone on Facebook. So uh, why don't you just ring them and tell them you're going to do it? Can and we just sincerely apologise <laughs> for what can only be described as the biggest screw-up since Pearl Harbor? And this is an absolute shocker. The text machine is blowing up. People are saying, well done, D-bags. That was the single most awful thing I've ever heard on radio. How would you think that was going to go, assholes? <laughs> and 
to be honest, I feel like we deserve it because we screwed up we, and everyone makes mistakes we, sometimes. We definitely oh, do. God. If you missed it, Stacey rang her friend Laura to unfriend her. She did it for the sake of their friendship. She was like, I still want to be friends, but so we can remain friends. I'm unfriending you on Facebook because you post way too many baby photos. Yeah, no, it was not meant to be an unfriend in real life. It was meant to just be, hey, let's not be Facebook friends anymore, but let's still be real friends. However, that didn't stop the tears from flowing, did it, Laura? <laughs> No, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. I just cried. No, don't, no, no. Laura, don't be embarrassed. It's 100% uh, our fault. On behalf of the Guy Shannon Clint show, I would just like to severely apologise to you. <laughs> severely to and sincerely. Maximum apology. Oh, and severely apologise. So, yeah. so sorry. Oh, oh thank you. Sharon, I'm, I'm say probably the a little. It's probably a lesson to be learned, to be honest, because I do post at least five pictures a day. No, 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 no it's not your lesson to learn. No, we're keep... sorry for ruining your day. <laughs> Look, Laura, like, I am real sorry about the situation, but five photos a day is probably a little bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, yeah. we're going we're gonna to make it a little bit better, Laura, because uh, we, we definitely don't want anyone to feel sad on our show or feel like we're being mean to them because we thought oh, it was going to be. Thank you. We thought it was going to be funny, but it, it wasn't funny. So we're going to hook you up with a whole lot of prizes from our guy, Sharon and Clint. Uh, well, sorry, the Edge Million Dollar Prize Cupboard. Oh, Oh, thank you so much. It's so kind of you. I really appreciate it. And we'll, we'll, gotta, we'll try and check in crying. something for the innocent baby here yeah, as well, yeah. because I feel the real victim is the baby who didn't even ask for these photos in the first place, <laughs> and now all of a sudden it's ended a friendship. Yeah, that's fair enough. The baby's cute, though. She's so cute. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, we love you, Laura. Thank you so much uh, for letting us call you back. We will totally understand if you would like to unfriend us on International Unfriend Day. Now, look, we still want to be friends, but if you're through, if you need a break, that's cool. We'll just some time to cool off. Yeah, definitely. Just some time to cool off. I'll, I'll definitely oh, add you again tomorrow. Okay, good. Well, at least, at least we've got an ad on its way. Thank you so much, Laura. I hope the line will get all your details. Thanks, guys. Guy Sharon and Clint. Edge. One of the things I love to say is knowledge is power. And the more when you know... You, when do you say that? I just, just said it just then. That's the first time you've ever said yeah, it. Yeah, it probably is. How, but, much, you know, how much power have you got? <laughs> a lot. I'm very powerful. Okay. Very powerful for someone with no knowledge. The more you know, the more you, you glow is another saying that I've That's often not, said. It's grow. The more you no. know, it should be good. The more you know, the more you glow. Grow. Glow. Well, I, my one's glow, okay? Someone, sometimes different strokes for different folks. It's another saying that I say quite a lot. <laughs> you, no, you don't. I've come up with a new genius life hack today. And you people... <laughs> is, it, is, is, it, it, is it swallow before you start talking? You people at home oh. can, you people at home can do... Don't laugh at me. You people at home can do this as well. So listen up. One of the problems I've been facing in my life recently is I've been getting a lot of parking tickets. Oh. And I don't have a um, registration on my car as well. Is that what's called? That little sticker yeah, yeah. down there. All it says is like what date your car was made, pretty much. Like, <laughs> it's all that does. It's such a piece of crap. I didn't have a registration, so every time I get a ticket as well, it actually costs an extra $200. Jesus. I know, Man, I know, I know. Someone's got some money. No, 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 no. But my, I'm supposed to have my registration. They've, I, they've sent out two and I haven't got one yet. Yeah. So anyway, I'm up to about $1,000 in fines. Is the life hack get a registration? Yeah, well, that's one of them. That's, that's the, a better idea. Is the life hack you live 500 metres away from work, so walk? Yeah, that's enough. No, no, because I still get um, li- I still get tickets when I'm at home as well. Oh, your mum. Just give you some tickets. <laughs> yeah. Here's, no, a, here's a, you haven't done your laundry ticket. <laughs> Here's the, here's the, here's the genius. She, put, good. she puts on your star chart. <laughs> no, here's the big thing that everyone in New Zealand needs to know about, unless you live in a small town where we don't have parking tickets. If you live in a town that has parking tickets... Do your laundry, you'll get a laundry ticket. Here's the tip, here's the tip. You can't get a parking ticket if you don't have windshield wipers. Life hack access granted. Genius. Life hack. <laughs> Entry granted. I've taken my um, windshield wipers off my car. No more tickets for me. Can't do it. There's nowhere to stick it on the car. You're a genius. They, wouldn't they just sell a tape it to your car? Also, you can't get your wheels <laughs> clamped if you don't have any wheels on your car. Another genius idea. <laughs> this so is gonna, getting better and better. So you're going to take your wheels off every time? You can't get your car towed if you don't even have a car and take the bus. Oh, I can't believe we gave this two and a half minutes. This is such a good idea. Everyone uh, else, try this life hack. It's good. No ne- windshield wipers. Next time, let's just talk about the Star Trek. <laughs> Guy, Sharon, and Clint. No windshield wiper, Clint. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Did I tell you that I met Liam Hemsworth when I was at the Bacardi thing in the Bermuda Triangle? You didn't drop that no, massive you piece didn't. of... You just told us boring stories about the crappy parties you went to. I was just trying to. to find the photo. Well, that was I just well, remembered. It's I, translate via I the radio, yeah, mate. I literally, tell the story, mate. I literally just remembered that I met Liam Hemsworth. Well, you, tell the story. Don't you just OTP? hold your phone up to the microphone and hope that it, like, Is that Liam Hemsworth? <laughs> Is that Liam Hemsworth? Oh, no, that's not Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was not... <laughs>
It looks nothing like Liam Hemsworth. Just some random dudes. Apparently, just that they both have chests and like short hair. Oh, okay. Well, that solves that one. Then. You got problems, mate. It's not the drinking; it's how we're drinking. Oh my god! Can we please make? He I, I posed for a photo and everything. I said, "Can I get a photo, Liam?" And the guy goes, "Yeah, of course." <laughs> Can we please make three fifty-seven every day at the time that Clint tells us stories about celebrities he hasn't met? <laughs> I'm sure I've got a video as well. I'll try and find that. I can't wait to see the um, video of a complete stranger. <laughs> yeah, I've got a video. I've got a video as well. Is that him? No, it's still not Liam. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Guys, I, Sharon I, and Clint. I met Angelina Jolie the other day. Wasn't it was just a person with brown hair. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Kia ora, and welcome to the show where I am trying to prove desperately that it's not so bad being 27 years old and living at home. Yeah, especially when you look at someone like Lord, right? It's ki- <laughs> it's getting weirder and weirder. I moved back into home. Lord uh, is so rich now that her parents basically live with her. <laughs> no, carry on. It's no. getting weird. It's getting weird now. I've been in for about a year. My mum started like doing things like if my bed's not made, like making it up. Yeah. And like the other day, I did put the recycling out, and my mum um, took the recycling out of the bin, cleaned it all, and then put it back in because I didn't do a good enough job of cleaning. She it. re-recycled your. It's- Recycling. It's getting super awkward. What I want to know today, 100 The Edge, is how old are you still living at home? What is my future? Jesse, your sister's still living at home. How old is she? My sister will be 30 in February. Wow. <laughs> does your mum and dad still do lots of things for her? Um, Yeah, quite a bit. What, what sort of stuff do they do? Um, All her shopping. Um, Well... Pretty much everything. Do they complain about her? Because my parents are complaining about me a lot. Oh, my mum complains all the time. (laughs) (laughs) How old are you, Jessie? I'm 22 and I'm out. And you're out. You're done. Yeah. Wow, okay, yeah. you're, the, you're the role model. It's not too yeah. bad. Okay, so 29, so that's a little bit older than So i got two guy. years, i got two years. We've got Luke on the line. Luke, it's your workmate. How old is he? 38. 38 years old? Yeah. Please tell me he at least washes his own undies, or is his mum doing that for him as well? <laughs> to be honest, well, I'm pretty convinced his mum does everything. She even takes him to lunch for every day. What? what um, can I ask what his reasons are? Has he ever moved out of home? No. Nah. So wow. he's just been there the whole time. Do you yeah. think? Do you think him and him and um, him and your mum actually secretly pash? <laughs> well, gonna, gonna be, uh, <laughs> no, this is not a lie, guys. This is not a lie. I'm just going to throw this to you guys right now. Yeah. My mum the other night was saying she was talking about how, like, back when she was a kid, they'd never even heard of gays. Yeah, and she reckoned, and this is real offensive, but I say it. She reckoned that. Uh, uh, the next step is incest. What? That's what she oh said. Oh my god! She said that. Was she pitching she, it? No, she wasn't was she meaning. It she to wasn't you? meaning to sound insane. She just was insane. No. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly just can't even. I can't fathom that one at all. We've got Fiona on the line. Fiona, how old is your sister who still lives at home? She's forty-three. Forty-three. <laughs> Do you bully her? Do you try and get her out of the house? Oh, I, I left the country. <laughs> I was do you seven, think, 17 when I left home. Do you think, and my sister reckons she's going to do this, do you reckon she's staying there so that she'll get the house in the end and you won't get it, you can't divvy the house? I'll be like, well, I've been here longer, it's technically my house, actually. Oh, possibly, but in, in all fairness, for the past three years, she has ha- looked after me mum, who's, who's quite ill now. So. Oh, OK, that okay. doesn't count. Okay, that doesn't my, count. Mum's, my mum's perfectly fit and healthy. I'm doing bugger all. <laughs> no, your, your sister is excused from this this topic today, Fiona. Hi, guys. My name is uh, Guy Williams. I am a uh, 27-year-old, let me check, uh, male, and um, I <laughs> have got something to admit. I live at home with my parents. Hi, Guy. It's good to have you here. Thanks for thanks for having me, guys. And I just wanted to um, come here and be amongst light, light-minded people who are probably going to live with their mum and their dad until they die. Shaz Dog, how old were you? Like, what was the um? What? How old were you the last time you lived at home? Eighteen. Uh, yeah, me too. The first time I moved out of home, I was. 16. Yeah. And then I moved back for a couple of years. When and then you were I 16, moved did out. you move out or did you get kicked out? For both. <laughs> <laughs> so I, had, I had time. I just had to find somewhere else to live. So we found someone older than you already. We found someone who's 38. And uh, we wanted to keep on going. We wanted to see uh, someone who can make me feel good about how old I am. Charles, your workmate is pretty old to be living at home. How old are they? No, uh, I think he's 43, 44. What? 43 or 44? And, like, what sort of things? Is it mum and dad or is it just mum at home? No, just just mum. His parents are split up 
Um, yeah, no, he was in a marriage a few years ago. That divorce, and he moved back home with mum. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Sick, sick of my wife, miss my mum, going home. <laughs> is, is he like mum? Always loves me, regardless. <laughs> is he like the uh, the guy that called up before, who's like mum makes his lunch for work every day? Is it that bad? Um, I don't. I. Honestly, don't want to know anything about it. He's kind of creepy. You say you say bad. I say good. I, I would love to have my lunch made for me every day. Yeah. And my bed made. Well, I think you're actually onto something, guy. I'm actually is like a life hack. It's genius. I'd have to commute from Rotorua every day, but yes. if I could get all those things, I reckon it'd be worth it. <laughs> you guys have two hands. Like, use them for a change. Like, don't be so freaking lazy. Oh, I do. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> no, no, no. Emma, your uncle still lives with his parents. How old's your uncle? He's turning 64 in a couple months. 64! This is getting yeah. really weird. That you, is crazy. Yeah. Do you think this yeah. is my future? Do you think I'm still going to be at home when I'm 64? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, what do you mean no? Oh, thank you. Compliments. <laughs> Why do you think that your uncle still lives at home at the age of 64, Emma? Um, I think it started when they moved, and then he just kind of settled in and got his side of the house, and he hasn't left. You get too settled, eh? You get yeah. too much into yeah. mum's yeah. home cooking. I reckon that I would, if I still lived at home, I would sleep so much better because because when I can't can't sleep, my mum um, would like pat my head and it would make that, me fall asleep. Okay, I, I, I that does so not happen in my house. Then. That is weird. That's the thing, though. At the mother bird, at some stage, has to boot you out of the nest, and oh. you either yeah. fly or you die. And I think, yeah. like, your mum needs to put you on the street with the inorganic collection. And if you survive, you'll be better off for it. And if you die, well, that's just natural selection. Emma, do you think Emma, do you think there's any sign of your uncle moving out? No, never. Well, I don't think. It, I don't think. Kill ever well. Me neither. A, Kia kaha. Time to I die. <laughs> it is official, Emma. Your uncle is the oldest person still <laughs> living with his parents at the age hey! of 64. Crazy. I don't know if that's an achievement or not, but we are still going to hook you up with a prize Slow for um, having, cool. having that record. Yeah. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the bloody edge. We've got a competition that we're running. Well, it's kind of a social experiment where we try and reunite you uh, with your ex partner, with the one that got away. If you want our help to go and get them, then we want you to enter this competition here. The Edge presents Project X. Plead your case and score back that one who got away. Let's just hope they don't give you the old Taylor Swift. We don't want to reveal what her name is because we don't want the X to kind of figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. But last week with JJ, Mike and Dom, they did Project X, which is where somebody gets to go and confront their ex that they think is the one that got away and ask them if they want to get back together. Now, last week it didn't go very well, but this week... It didn't um, go very well is so quite a polite way of saying uh, it was yeah, terrible. It, it, went, it went real bad. <laughs> you can see the video on the edge.co.nz. But we are doing another round because we're going to have a go at it. And we've got another possible contestant on the line. Now, Project X contestant, hello. 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 Now, you were with your ex, was it five years ago? I know. I was with him a year ago, but we were together five years. Wow, oh. that's a big one. And do you consider him the love of your life? Yeah, I do. Why did you break up then? Um, Because I ended up moving out of town to start fresh because we used to fight all the time but then realised that was the biggest mistake of my life. Oh, okay. Why do you think it would be different now? Like, if if you got back together, what makes you think that you wouldn't just go back to fighting? Things have changed. Like, we've both matured a lot and I think we could make it work. Do you guys have a good relationship? Like, do you still talk on the phone or Facebook or anything like that? Yeah, we're still the best of friends. Like, talk all the time. We still hang out occasionally when I come back to town. You sound really good. If uh, if this doesn't work out, then maybe you can date Chang because he's available now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> now, now, we need to know a little bit about the, the guy. Don't name him because we don't want anything to get back to him yet. Do you know if he's seeing someone else? I don't think so, but... Have you stalked him know, out, Hart? Yeah, are you Facebook oh, friends? Well, yeah, we're Facebook friends, but I hear from other people that he's interested in someone else, but I don't think anything happened. Okay. We're not interested in someone else, mate. Jessica Alba. <laughs> Okay, let's get let's get down to the nitty gritty. We, you guys broke up a year ago. When was the last time you hooked up? Uh, it would have been a year ago. So you guys haven't had any like ex relations at all? No, we haven't. Okay, well I reckon you could be a really good contestant because it sounds like she he sounds hasn't promising. hasn't like you don't sound crazy. And it, <laughs> it's and a, it's he, a start. He check sounds, one. He sounds like he hasn't fully moved on. He yet. doesn't sound crazy. Check two. Is there a plan that you've got in your mind Strategy. of what you would like to do? Just win him back. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 But we need we need more than that. No, we need some, leave, we need leave some leave ideas. We've already got the idea of bringing Chang along with a guitar. Yeah. Um, and maybe some party poppers. Balloons are popular. Yeah, yes. balloons are pretty good. We'll um, get you a pretty dress. You just have to go and stand in front of that mirror girl and re- 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 rehearse what you want to say. Yeah, I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, good luck. We're, we're narrowing down our list this week. We could be in touch with you and calling you up for Project X very soon. Hang on a second. Are you this nervous that you're having a cigarette while talking to us on the phone? <laughs> no, I'm not smoking, but I'm really, really nervous. Oh, okay. It sounded like you were dragging durries, and I was like, you must be nervous. <laughs> Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Do you ever th- hear something that just scars your eardrums? I have a tail that will cripple you in your ear holes, okay? okay. okay. Oh, are you going to tell me that Chad Kroger and Avril Lavigne are now having babies? <laughs> I'll get my ear wheelchair ready. I um, I was uh, on the weekend chatting to a friend. I'd just call her a friend. I've known her reasonably well. Lovely girl, normal girl, weird story. A couple of weeks ago, she went on a first date with someone, and it went well, only to find out a couple of days later via Facebook stalking and stuff like that that the person she went on a date with was, in fact, her cousin. Uh, Okay, uh, so, hang on a second. Did they pash or anything? Okay, so, I had to ask that. Please no, please no, please no. Amongst my vomiting, she said they went home together, (gasps) spent the night together, Uh, and were hitting it off really well up until the point uh, where they found out they were related, and... When they discussed the most awkward thing I've ever heard of in my life, he wasn't completely disgusted by the idea that they possibly have a second date. See, the- she cut it off. She cut it off. Oh, Thank man. God it's illegal and it's not encouraged in any circumstance. Oh, man. That is so weird. That happened to you know, my friend before he realised he was gay. The girl <laughs> that made him gay, his last date and his made last patch. yeah. When he went round to meet his birth parents, found out it was his birth sister that he'd pashed the night oh. before. Okay, okay, I gotta oh. ask people right now. Theoretical, theoretical, complete theoretical. If you're in love someone with someone, if you're in a long term relationship with what someone, if you're married to someone and you found out that you guys were cousins, would you stay in the relationship or would you get out of it? Shaz like I go to you. Yeah, no, no. Oh, I would definitely break up, and I'd be get, getting to work on my okay. uh, wish list. Let, let's say it's you. Let's say it's you, hypothetically, and let's say it's with Bryce. You've been together how long? Five and a bit years. And you're in love, and you've got a house, and you've got a dog. Yeah. And you've already, you've already, you've already done the deed. A couple, I assume you've done the deed. Yeah, like three times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't factor into it. Your cousin's relationship's over. Hell near. Tell you what, I'd be calling up some people, though, that I've got, got on the list. Do right you, now. Yeah. Do you think Bryce would answer the same? <laughs> nah, he'd stay with me. Let's test it. Should he'd we... stay with me. He, he's already he's already sown his seed in too many places. Let's call him he up. probably has slept with a cousin, so he'd be all right with it. <laughs> can, we, can we call him to figure it out? Do you mind? <laughs> what? Sure. Let's do it. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. What are you doing? Not much. Just cut, about to go to the gym. Cut yeah. to the chase, Sharon. Ask the question. Question. Oh, hello. Bryce. Hey, Bryce. Hi, 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 Clint. And I'm picking me old, me old mate guys there too. It's like great to be here, mate. Place. Oh, of course. <laughs> okay. This is like we, this is just like when we're in bed. <laughs> Here is the question, Bryce. We have been together for five and a bit years. We've been married for two and a bit years. If you found out tonight from your mum that we were cousins, would you stay with me or would you break up with me? Break up with you. You would? Yeah. Oh, thank God, because I said the same thing, and I'd start wa- I'd start working through my wish list, like, straight away. So I'm so glad you said yeah. the same thing. Yeah, no, I was already thinking about other chicks. <laughs> yeah, same. So was I. Bryce. <laughs> yeah? What if we were to, live on air, though, drop a bombshell on you and say, bad news, mate, you are cousins. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, you'd have a radio divorce on your hands. A, a, a live air divorce. I'm, I'm picking it would be good for your show. Well, I believe, I believe because you're both in the same boat, uh, keen to get out of this cousin relationship and see other people, we could arrange an annulment. Yeah, well, are we cousins? Has this got any basis? <laughs> no, we're not actually cousins, so don't start getting through your list quite yet. When I fantasise about I get... you guys, I like to think that you're cousins. <laughs> can, I, can I get on Tinder? 
You, you know, can get on Tinder all you want, mate. Get, gotta, gotta go. <laughs> See you, Bryce. Bye. Oh eight hundred the edge. Your text into three three four three. What's the What is the question? The question is: Is there anyone out there who would consider staying together if it was true love? If it was, think about it, if it was true love. Hang on a second. We haven't asked Clint. Oh no, I'd break up as well. I'm not. I'm <laughs> you not, I'm would not, yeah. not. Anyone out there? I'll answer the edge. Your text in the three three four three. Is anybody going to say that they'd stay together? Is anyone going to openly say that they would? You stay would together? stay together, even if Lucy was your cousin. You're still not going to no get any better than that. <laughs> Kendra, what would you do? What would I do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just realised. Um, I don't know about first cousin. I probably definitely wouldn't go there. But I have heard by law that second cousin is actually okay. Second cousin. <laughs> so right? would you go second? <laughs> what constitutes second cousin? Second cousin is like so. If I had a kid, yeah, then my kid would be second cousins with my first cousins. They're like when you go to a party and there's some people who you recognise but you don't know their names. It's those ones. <laughs> <laughs> Ash, what would you do? I would. So, I would so break up them right, but I actually know two people that are actually doing this right now. Wow. Oh, my God. And does everyone think it's weird, or is everyone like, oh, yeah, that's all good? Well, they were together for eight years, and then one of their grandmothers went and told them that they were actually cousins. So, and, they and, thought, wow, and, yeah. we're kind of stuck now. We might as well just stay together, and, and they're currently engaged. And this is essentially what we're talking about. We're not saying, hey, would you go to family Christmas and scope out the talent? We're saying, <laughs> if you... If you'd been together and there was oh. and there was an existing bond there, if you were already in love before you knew you were cousins, would you stay together on that basis? And those people that you know did. Yes, they did. Andrew. Hello. Now we need to ask. You hooked yep. up. You hooked up with your cousin Andrew, correct? Uh, kind of. Yeah. Well, yes, we hooked up. Okay. Did you know you were cousins before you hooked up? No. So what happened after you found out you were cousins and you'd had a pash? Well, we were basically kind of friends, and then we kind of hooked up a couple of times, and I happened to be uh, speaking to her mum, and um, we happened to trace back to this to the fact that we shared the same uh, great-great-great-great-grandfather. And, See, that's uh, why I you just... Up. Yeah. That's why you just never do a family tree when you've got a significant <laughs> other, because somehow, some way, you're going to wind yeah, up that if together. You, if you go back to great-great-great-great, I think there are only four people in New Zealand, so you're bound to be semi-related. Can, can I ask you, Andrew? I, I want to perpetuate... Per- 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 I've got to perpetuate a stereotype. Are you in a small town? Very small. No. <laughs> Tiny. He doesn't get reception there. He's gone. And Susan, what would you do if you were in a relationship with somebody and then you found out they were your cousin? Would you stay or would you go? Uh, I'm still together with them. Wow. Okay, so Susan, break it down for us. Is is your pa- husband or boyfriend first cousin, second cousin, third cousin? Second cousin. Second cousin. It's not illegal. Did, Did you, you know you mm. were cousins before you uh, committed to a relationship? No. And we, how long were you together before you found out you were cousins? Uh, probably about a year. Wow! Is it, is it a bit of a is it a bit of a taboo subject within the family, or does it go down all right? Uh, not really. It's not taboo. It's been been right throughout the family. So you know, okay, I, I okay. guess the good thing about it is if, if you were dating Speechless. your cousin, if you had to find like a positive apart from the fact that you're in love, is that you never have to have that anxious thought of oh my god, what are my kids going to look at? Because you just look around at all your other cousins. <laughs> Also, you don't have to it's worry about... Right, two- it, saves, it, it saves bringing another family in. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> saves do you have saves any, on catering at the wedding. <laughs> do you have any kids together already, Susan? We have two. Two kids and a you okay? No more children. No more children. Good, that was the question no more to ask. Yeah, because I've got so many questions. Did you have to do, like tell your uh, midwife or your doctor or anything that you guys were cousins when you were pregnant, just in case, I don't know, like there was an extra finger somewhere? God, we're uneducated, aren't we? No, no, I went to the doctors and, and genealogists first to make sure it was all right to have a cousin, um, to have a baby. <laughs> have a cousin. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> hang on. Yeah, no, the, the bloodlines, even on first cousins, your bloodline is still thick enough to be able to have children. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That is great. Can we give her a prize or something? Yes. Or yeah. something. Well, Sorry for laughing. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, hang on a second, but also, last question. Your partner, who is your cousin, and you had a kid together, does that technically make your kid your son or daughter and your cousin? Yes, 
When you guys have a fight and you're not talking to each other and you're at a party and you introduce each other and you're in the fight, do you say, this is my husband? But, or because you're in the fight, you're like, well, this is my cousin because he's no longer your husband. I inter- well, we introduce each other as our partner as well as a cousin, so that way if they've got questions, then it's out there. too late. Wow, oh, there you go. So many questions. Thank you so much, Susan. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Throughout time, there has been a proud tradition of the Guy, Sharon and Clint cover challenge. It's my favourite. We've had artists from all over New Zealand and the world complete one of the great pinnacles of musical achievement. Ed Sheeran was my favourite. Jenny uh, Blackmore. Broods. Sole Mio. Oh. Jamie McDowell. Benny Yay. Tiffany. Uh, that guy who wore the lid. Andy Grammer. That guy who did the um, who did that awesome Anaconda cover and made it real funny. Mariana Trench. And some other amazing artists. Did I say Benny Tiffany? Yes, Did I say Ed Sheeran? Yeah, he did. I just wanted yeah. to re- Ed Sheeran did this, Ed, for Ed, God's Ed, sake. Ed Sheeran amazing. Amazing. Lord, yeah. He launched it off. Today we have... Perhaps the most exciting cover challenge we've ever had. Oh my God, is it Beyonce? In here in the studio, no it's not Sharon, in here in the studio we have to perform a song from the hit musical Jersey Boys. Please welcome, Chang Hung! I have no idea why I'm doing this. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why you're doing this. Yeah. On Friday, mm-hmm. you pulled one out of the bag when we threw you a guitar, mm-hmm. and you just, we didn't prompt you, you just said, I'd like to perform Jersey Boys. We didn't know you loved Jersey Boys. We didn't love know, the movie, love the musical. We didn't know love you the had soundtrack. such a voice on you. Whatever. So today, we've organised for you, not just a platform mm-hmm. to launch your career to the whole world, mm. we've organised a, a, a keyboard player to come in and play live Give it up for, for you. Callum. Hey! And we're going to offer you the spotlight and the chance to showcase your challenge on the Guy Sharon and Clint cover challenge. <laughs> okay. I can't wait for this. Text in your feedback to 0800 The Edge or text in the 3343. <laughs> Do you call on 0800 The Edge? Are you ready, Chang? <clears throat> Hi, History. guys. It's Chang here, and here's my entry for the Guy Sharon and Clint cover challenge. Hit it, boys. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You feel like heaven to touch I want to hold you so much And I cannot remember the next few lines But I thank God that I'm alive You're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you What were your thoughts on Chang's Guy Sharon and Clint cover challenge? Chang hung. <laughs> I'm just adding you to the list of greats. <laughs> Hello, what was your thoughts on, Guy, on Chang's cover challenge? Me? Yes, you. Um, I thought it was really funny and I couldn't stop laughing. So. <laughs> oh, okay. well, that's, I guess that's a positive. Ed Hello, what did you think of Chang's cover? Uh, not too bad, Chang. I wouldn't quit your day job or anything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean not too bad? That was too bad. That was appalling. No, guy. Guy, have some respect. <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, good yeah, one, guy. Yeah, yeah guy, you bully. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it was uh, pretty average. What did you think of it? <laughs> um, hi, I actually think that uh, Callum would make a great son-in-law. He's a great piano player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Callum, Callum is fantastic. What, what, yeah. makes, um, what makes being a piano player a good son-in-law? Um, he's marrying, if it's the right Callum, he's marrying my daughter on Friday. Oh! Callum is it? I think it is. I, it. I think it is. Oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for calling. Let's not give Callum too much of the credit, though. This is it's about It's not about Ch- Callum, it's about me. This someone, is about Chang. <laughs> someone text in, make Callum louder, make the voice levels <laughs> much lower. <laughs> if you've just joined us, we're doing a Guy Sharon Clint cover challenge with the most special, special guest we've ever had. <laughs> Chang Hung is in the studio. I'm here every day, Guy. Yeah, but you're, you're especially here today. We didn't know that you had this talent inside you, Chang. If you just missed it, we've had uh, a lot of a lot of requests for a replay. Whatever. Um, this is what you just missed. Chang taking on the cover challenge doing Jersey Boys. You're just too good to be true. 
Can't take my eyes off of you. Oh yeah. You feel like heaven to touch. Don't touch me. I wanna hold you so much. Seriously, don't touch me. And I cannot remember the next Get few lines. But I thank God that I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. I thought it was bad the first time. It was even worse the second time because Chang just came over and squeezed me while he was doing <laughs> so it. So romantic. What I like about you, Chang, is that mm. you committed. I should go on X Factor New Zealand. No, you shouldn't. You're terrible. Well, let's get some feedback from the phones first to see what people think. Peter <laughs> is on 0800 The Edge. Peter, what do you think? I think you guys are just trying to get rid of Chang. You're launching a new career. <laughs> and you don't want to make him redundant. He's going to spread his wings and learn how to fly. Eh? We didn't have much luck well, when we sent him to Mori FM, Peter, so this is the only <laughs> chance that we have. Well, it's either that or you're sending him down to the basement with a red swing line stapler. <laughs> I don't, oh, what? I don't I know don't, what that what means, the hell? Like a sweet shot. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Maya, what do you think? I think Chang is going to be New Zealand's next William Hung. Oh, great comment. Oh, William Hung was that guy from American Idol, like back in the day, they did that. She bangs, she bangs. <laughs> Ricky Martin. Yeah, what's, what's your Ricky Martin like, Chang? Pretty bad. <laughs> can, we, can we get some? Oh, she do you, bangs. Do you oh, know she bang? Do you know what I reckon we no, do? Let him sing she bang. No, 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 let's no, move on. Let's no. move on. Let's move on. Chang, Go on, guys. Sing she bangs. Oh, sorry, I had a good idea for once in my life, so I want to share it. <laughs> I reckon we almost make it a weekly thing no. that Chang sings, and we turn it into like an album that we can release in time oh. for Christmas. Well, the only thing is, is that when we played that, the boss Roger texted me and he said. <laughs> No! And I wrote back, ha, 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 ha. And he said, I much prefer when you guys play the cause. And I wrote, <laughs> I wrote back, that was a good we day all... we played the cause. <laughs> so, should we play some cause? No. No. I do like the idea of Father Chang Mrs. Big Christmas album, though. No, 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 no. Christmas. no, no. Oh, that's too good no, to be true. If you want to see Can't Chang's performance, believe it or not, you. we captured that performance you. on video. <laughs> and it's online right now at theedge.co.nz. We're about to post it on our Facebook. Facebook page, so but I know we take a lot of piss out of you, but a round of applause for Chang, everybody. Well done, mate. Thanks for coming. Really sterling effort. You're just too good Play to him out, Chang. You. Can't take my eyes oh, off of you. Guy, Sharon and Clint on The Edge. In the Sunday Star Times on the weekend, there was a serious discussion and interview with female comedians about the stigma surrounding female comedians. So, uh, so is this the stigma when people go, mm, I don't like female comedians, they're not funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I used to think that as well. I Did was you? really pretty... When I was 18, I remember I left, re- left home and I remember giving my brother Paul, and I regret saying this now, so don't judge me because I was an idiot when I was 18. I'm an idiot now, but I was more of an... Imagine how dumb I was when I was 18. Yeah. Least excuses, more story. Yeah, I remember telling... Telling my brother, I go, remember two pieces of advice. Don't listen to what dad says and women aren't funny. <gasps> and then I left <gasps> to university. And now, since then, you know, Tina Fey has dominated 30 Rock and the comedy scene. Amy Poehler is one of my favourite comedians. Kristen Schaal is one of my favourite um, stand-ups. And I also recommend, for people probably don't know her, but Maria Bamford, if you want to know that female comedian. Anyway, even, since then, even my Even locally, opinion, Ursula Carlson Ursula, is massive. Rose, Rose Matafeo. There's Chelsea so many. Handler. Michelle Accord. There's so many great ones out there. And it got me thinking how hard it is to be a female comedian and how much prejudice they come up against. And I reckon there's even women out there who, when a female comedian comes up on a stand-up bill, um, doesn't like female comedians and might not laugh at them. It's just just a stigma. I think there's a big stigma around female comedians because people instantly think period jokes and like bad jokes. But I I think there was a time where that it was quite common. Like you go to the comedy gala and the girl would come out and it would there'd always be one. But now I think that the jokes are a lot more funnier. I actually find a lot of the girls funnier than the boys. I don't I don't really pay to go to comedy shows, but I've paid to go and see Chelsea Handler very soon. Um, Okay, because. One of the interesting things about that, because that is a huge, huge thing that always gets brought up. Female comedians are dirty. All they do is talk about their bits. What I realised is that they're just as dirty as male comedians, but you're, like, naturalised and it's normalised to talk about men's... Yeah. Like, you talk about things that come out of wangers yeah. all the time, but you don't talk about that when it comes to females. So if someone does mention the word a word like vagina, then all of a sudden I freeze up. Like, I get all, like, you antsy about it. You guys do it to it. me all the time. If I say anything borderline <laughs> gross, it's, it's bad. But then if, like, our boss Leon says it, then it's all right. 
So I think I've come around. I think I've come around. It's been a full. It's been a full circle. It's been ten years, but I'm finally no longer a douchebag. And I'm going to say that um, I probably often prefer female comedians. Okay, just to finish it off to prove how sorry you are, will you right now consider becoming a female comedian? <laughs> Guys, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Quite excited. Coming up this Thursday, the Vodafone New Zealand Music Awards are going to be screening on Channel 4. For the first time ever, they're going to be live. And, like, so if anything goes down, like that year that um, people were abusing the guy from Naked and Famous for being rude, um, for people, uh, that year that somebody dissed the Prime Minister, oh, all the year, or someone said that God wasn't real while they were standing in front of um, Ben Harper, who's extremely religious and was a guest of the awards. Yeah, don't don't just watch for the train wrecks, though. Like, oh, it's no. going to be a good show as well. Every, no, the show is going to be. <laughs> Great, but you've got to watch for all that stuff too. It's just honestly such a great night. And uh, Clint and I are going to be doing the Mentos Red Carpet special, which will be before the awards. Very glad you brought up the Mentos Red Carpet, Shaz Dog, because I noticed that you and Clint were doing it. Yep, that's yeah. one of the things I noticed that you guys were doing it. Well, this is, this is my fourth. Just you and Clint. This is my fourth year doing it. My just, and just two of the three members of the Guy Shane and Clint show. <laughs> I got to choose a co host this year and I, I chose Clint. Because why? Why? Drew, well, why? Drew is busy and the, uh, <laughs> I did it with you a couple of years ago and you let a goat poo on the carpet. So I was like, hell no, I'm just going to have Clint. So two years ago, I did the red carpet with Sharon and I've since been fired for just general borderline and Competence, I think. Like, no one said anything. They're just like, hey, good one, guy. Um, we might have your back next year, but probably not. No, okay. I think we'll, get, we'll find something else for you to do. Maybe you could present an award. So you've been dropped from the red carpet. Yeah. You've been dropped from the uh, No More Beersies campaign. Oh, no, don't start. Um, how are things going at Jono and Ben? Not going. Not going good, to be honest <laughs> at the moment, mate. Things are not going well at all. It's called Jono and Ben for a reason. Uh, Jono and Ben and Guy will be at the awards, though. You can see those guys during the live show. It's all going to be on TV3. They're Thursday night TV4 tu- tu- TV4 sorry tune in see all the action see who wins the awards see if Lord wins everything it's going to be replayed on TV3 on Saturday night as well so there's so many chances to watch it too a- many some would say and it's going to be on Edge TV as well there it's going to be everywhere you're not going to be able to avoid it we didn't even do this because it's going to be put in front of you at every turn and <laughs> I'm worried I'm hoping it's not windy and if it is I apologise in advance if I'm Accidentally show everyone my undies. Go, oh, there's a reason to watch. Today's Guy Sharon and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get grass today from your friendly grass vendor.